Welcome back. Let's cover methods. Other languages call these functions. Java calls them methods. Basically, it's a block of code that can be reused and ran multiple times in different places. Here's our basic format of a method. You have some optional keywords at the beginning. Then you have your return type, and then your method name, which again should be in camel case. You then have open and closed parentheses, and then open and closed curly braces. So if you look on the right, you have static, that's your optional keyword. Void is your return type. We'll cover this in detail in just a second. And then print, that's the name of my method. You can name that whatever you want. And then in between the two curly braces is whatever code you want to run. And right now we are using the static keyword. Every method we write right now will be static. We're not ready to understand what this means yet. We'll cover it once we get the classes. Just know for now, you have to include it for the method to work. Okay, let's look at an example. So here we have some code. We have a print line statement. Then we do some integers. We print out the sum of the integers. We then have the same print line statement that we had up here. We then have a double. We print out the double times two. And then we have the exact same print line statement again. So here's the problem. If I want to update this print line statement and say, just change it to peach, I would have to go to each place in the code and update it. This is annoying, especially considering you're eventually going to have hundreds of classes and dozens of folders. So here's a better way. I'm going to come down here. Notice this is the first time we're coding outside of the main method. So the main method goes from open curly brace to closed curly brace. We're going to go outside of that, but we're still within the main class. So we type static. Again, all of our methods right now are just going to have static. We'll explain what this means later. We then need our return type. It's going to return nothing. So we're just going to say void. We then need to give our method a name. I'm just going to call it print. Open and close parentheses and then open and close curly braces. Notice IntelliJ automatically gives you the second curly brace. I will then hit enter. And I'm gonna come up here and just copy this and paste it in here. So again, talking about scope, this method goes from this curly brace to this one. I'm then going to replace all of these print line statements. So I'm gonna delete this. I'm then going to type the letter P and notice it automatically tries to give me a hint. So if I hit enter, it automatically puts it in there for me. I'm going to delete the next one. And this time I'm going to type it out. So print open and close parentheses and then a semicolon. And then the same thing down here. So this is known as calling a method. And this is the method itself. When I run this, it works exactly how you'd expect. Printing out peach, and then your integer, and then peach, etc. Here's how Java works. It runs sequentially. What that means is it starts up here. It then goes to this line. There's nothing here, so it skips it. Then there's a comment. It then just skips it and keeps going. Once it gets to print, what this is is a reference to somewhere else. So once it gets here, it actually jumps down here and runs everything in between these two curly braces. Once it's done, it comes back up here and keeps running. Again, once it gets to the method call, it jumps down here to print, runs everything in here, comes back up, and then keeps running, etc. Okay, so next up, what is the return type? In this case, I have the return type circled in red. It's an int. This is the data type, an integer, a string, a boolean, that you return when the method is finished running. If the method doesn't return anything, you put void, which is what we just did. You can return wrapper classes or primitives, and you can think of a return as an output. So what is it output once it finishes running? The only way to understand this is to just give you a bunch of examples. So I'm going to delete this code.
So this one has no return value, therefore it's void. Here's one that does have a return value, static, integer, this is your return type, give me one, and then I'm going to use the return keyword, return, and I just return the value of one. So when I come up here, I can call give me one, and what this does is this gets converted to one. So to see this in action, I'm going to do print, and then I'm going to call give me one. When I hit run, you can see it printed one. So think about what happened. It came down to this line of code. It saw that there was a method. It runs down here and then says, oh, this method returns an integer and it's going to return me one. So, okay, my value is one, comes back up here, and this gets converted to one. Let's give another example. Static string give me hello world. I'm then going to return hello world. I'm going to come back up here and call it. So I'm going to do print and then I'm going to call give me hello world. When I run this, I get hello world. Now really think this through. If this is resulting in a string, if I call the dot operator on it, I then have all of my string methods. So I can call to uppercase on it and it will act just like a string. So if I click run again, it prints it in all caps. So this is effectively a string. This gets resolved to a string. Let's do one more. Static. This time the return type will be boolean. Give me true. And I'm just going to return true. Now when I print this out, give me true. You can of course guess that it will print out true. Now of course this does work with the wrapper classes but it also works with the primitives. So I can change this from integer to int and it will work the same way. Remember it works the same way due to auto boxing and unboxing. I can change this to baby boolean. It'll work the same way. And remember string does not have a primitive data type. So you can't do it for that one. Okay, so why would I do this? Why would I write a method that just returns one? Y you wouldn't. All right, just hold on. So next up we have parameters. So parameters go in the parentheses. You can have as many parameters as you want, but generally speaking, you should keep it three or less. Otherwise you need to rethink your code. Parameters are just the things you give to the method for it to work. So think of this as your input. If you look at this method on the right, you have two inputs, x and y, and we're returning the sum of the two inputs. So this method is called add. The point of the method is to add two numbers. Okay, I deleted the previous code. Let's write some more. Integer x is equal to one. Integer y is equal to two. And then I want to create a method that adds these two numbers together. So I'm going to come down here. Again, we have to use static right now. What is it going to return? Well, if it's the sum of two integers, it's going to return another integer. So integer. We then need to give it a reasonable name. Of course, it should be called add. We then have open and close parentheses, and then open and close curly braces. Inside the parentheses is where I tell it what the parameters are. So I need to define the data type of the parameter that can come in, so an integer. And I'm going to take in an integer x, and then comma, and then it's also going to take in an integer y. So again, parameters are the inputs. So when I call this method, I need to give it the things for it to be able to do its job. That's what this is. I can then return 
x, and remember your operator for addition, it's plus, plus, y. Now think about what this did. It took this input, and this x is directly related to this x. So you can name it whatever you want. If you want to name this number 1, that's fine. Then you just need to call it number 1 here. If you want to call this number 2, that's fine. You just need to call it number 2 here. Notice you do have to define the data type coming in. Java requires you to define data types all over the place. Then I'm going to have another integer, integer sum is equal to, and I'm going to call the add method, add. So when I type the letter A, it automatically pops up. And you can even see I'm supposed to give it a number one and a number two. I then need to give it x, comma, and then give it y. When I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and print the sum. And you can see we printed out the sum of three. Now this is very important. You don't have to give it a variable. You can just give it raw numbers. So if I do print, I can just call the add method, add, and I can give it 10 and 11. I can just give it the raw numbers. Let's do the exact same thing, but instead we're going to do subtract. So again, for now, we do need the static keyword. We need our return type of integer. We need to give our method a decent name. Subtract seems pretty good. I'm going to say integer x and then integer y. Open and closed curly braces. And then I'm going to return x minus y. And of course, I can come up here and call the method subtract 10 and 8 and it will do exactly as you expect it to. So here's a simplified way of looking at it. You have your inputs, that's your parameters. It then goes into your method, and that results in your output, or your return. Let's take the time to revisit the main method. So notice you can see the void keyword. This is your return type. So the main method, it doesn't return anything because who would it return something to? It's your main method. Its goal is to just start up your program. Notice the method name is named main. It has one parameter, it's a string, but there's something else going on here. You've got these square brackets. That's technically an array. We'll cover that in the future. And then in the future, we will of course cover public and static, but the main method should be a little less confusing to you now. And one more interesting thing, is variable scope. So if you look on the right hand side, you can see integer x is equal to 1, and then integer result is equal to multiply by 2, where we give it that value of x. When you come down to actually run the method, it says return x times 2. Well, this is confusing. You just name something x. How can you do it twice? So the variable x in the multiply method is scoped to only that method. Once the method finishes running, x goes away. So variable scope is really important. It means you can reuse the variable named x multiple times as long as it's scoped correctly. And this isn't something you really have to worry about. If you mess something up, your IDE, IntelliJ, it will yell at you and it won't let you run your code. So this is something you kind of just learn as you do it, but just keep in mind variable scope. Okay, as always, do the homework. There's gonna be a lot of it this time. Good luck.